A significant portion of the rest of this year, I've now dedicated to getting back on the horse as an artist. Recently, I released my video, County Graves, which features an intro sequence that goes like this. In this video, I'm gonna show you how I created that title sequence so that you can do something similar if your video calls for it. Let's get into it. Now, I really like the title sequence that I've created here. It's really cool, and I think it's the, the full form of what I want this music video to be, is to start off with this title sequence. But when it comes to marketing your music online, it might not necessarily be the best foot forward. Because this has this prolonged title sequence, it's gonna be very hard for me to run ads on this music video and get long-term viewers, like 75% of the way through the video. People will probably drop off a lot quicker because it takes about a minute to get into the ad with this video. So if you're gonna be using the video for the purposes of advertising and finding new fans, I recommend you jump right into the action. But I did wanna just create something that was a full work of art, something that my existing fans that I'm creating, ones that I've already brought into the fold, can enjoy and will stay the full length for. So this is a nifty set of tricks to know how to do. Even if you are creating a front end asset, this still can be useful. So let's dive in here and I'll show you what we got going on and, and how we created it. All right, so hopping in here to After Effects, I just wanna show you the project file that I have for this footage. Even if you don't know anything about After Effects, I'm gonna show you step-by-step step how I did this. Generally, you'll be able to piece together how to do this yourself in any scenario by the end of this video. So here in After Effects, we see all of my layers that comprise this image. We see the top layer that I have here is this copy of the clip. I actually have several different copies of the clip throughout these layers. And the reason is, is that I wanted to have multiple titles hidden behind graves in this scene. So for instance, if I just scroll back here and I eliminate this front grave, we see that the illusion is lost, right? This dot is going over the grave and all these things are masked out to hide words throughout this composition. Now these shadows you see on the ground here are just this exact text turned black and then smushed down and placed on the ground in the way that the shadows were falling from the graves in the scene. So you know that this sequence, this composition is comprised of masked out graves, text simulated shadows of text in the scene, and then of course the background. So first we're gonna look at how to create this 3D text, then how to create the shadows and simulate any shadows that would have fallen on the text in the scene. And then I'm gonna show you how I masked out all these graves. So the first thing you're gonna wanna do is create a new After Effects project and then drag your clip into After Effects so that it shows right here in the project panel. Then right click on your clip and select new comp from selection. Then we're gonna go up into our effects panel, which should be in the top right, but if you don't see it, you can always go to window and then select effects and presets and it'll pop up. We're gonna type in 3D cam and already it's found the effect that I want, 3D camera tracker. So just click that and drag it onto your clip and it will immediately begin analyzing. So when it's done, it's gonna pop up a bunch of 3D tracking points, trying to guess where are the flat surfaces in this footage so that we can use that to determine where we are in 3D space. And now that it's done analyzing, we see all these little colored dots, which are the planar tracking points for this effect. So when I hover over these planar tracking points, it links up between three of them to try to create a plane. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna find one that kind of perfectly matches up. So now that I've got that hovered over and highlighted, I'm gonna right click and click create text and camera. And boom, this text pops up. So if I just highlight that layer, I can actually use these little arrows to drag it around. So this arrow moves it up or down in 3D space. This X axis moves it left or right in 3D space. And this Z axis moves it back and forwards in 3D space. So I'm gonna move it forwards just a little bit. And then I'm gonna switch to my rotation tool here up in the panel. I can also click W just to get there really quickly. And that changes these axes, little arrow handlebars to rotation tools. So if I click on this Y one, I can rotate it this way in space. If I click on this X, I can rotate it that way in space. And if I click on this, I can just do the classic rotate 
So I kind of like the way that looks. I'm gonna switch back to my selection tool. You can do that by just typing V. And I'm gonna drag this down, move it out a little bit, and then drag it this way. I don't like the rotation on it, so I'm gonna grab this Y axis and rotate it just to face me a little bit more. And that's about good. So switching back to the selection tool, I can type in what I want it to say. And then I'm gonna have to make some more adjustments based on that. Now we've got our text how we want it. Now the next thing I gotta do is create that shadow. So I'm going to highlight this layer. And I'm gonna type Control C or Command C if you're on a Mac and then Control V or Command V if you're on a Mac. And that's gonna pop up the exact same layer. What I'm gonna do with that is take this top part and just smush it down a little bit and then I'm going to go into my effects panel and type in levels and drag that onto this second version of the text and I'm going to drag this slider to make it black and now all I've got to do is make it look a little bit fuzzy so I'm going to go to my effects go to blur and sharpen and then I'm just gonna throw a Gaussian blur on that text and we'll crank it up. Now let's see how that looks on this green grass down here. It looks pretty good, but I think it should be a little bit more defined and that's starting to look a whole lot better. And then smush it some more since the text doesn't have any depth to it. Great, now that shadow is directly underneath the text in 3D space, but I don't exactly want it directly underneath. As you see this grave and this shadow, the sun must be somewhere over here and it's casting this grave shadow a little bit forward and to the right of the grave in 3D space. If we were scrolling by these graves from a sideways view, the, the shadow would go outwards and to the right. So I kind of want that for my text shadow just to match what the scene looks like and where the sun is in this scene. So I'm gonna bring it forward a little bit and then we're gonna move it to the right. And let's see how that looks when we get closer to the text. All right, that looks pretty good, but I think it should still be out forward a little bit. I also think this text should be forward a little bit. Now I'm actually just gonna go on my shadow layer, click this drop down and the drop down for transform and just bring down the opacity a little bit. I think that shadow is a little bit too harsh on the ground. That looks good. Maybe I'll lower my blurriness a little bit and I'd say that looks about right. So let's track backwards in the scene. I'm gonna make some minor adjustments here just to make it look exactly how I want it to. And one thing I do recommend while you're doing this is to track forwards and backwards in the scene to really get a sense of where your text is sitting in 3D space. And that's gonna make it a lot easier to make these fine tuning kind of adjustments. All right, that's looking pretty good. Now, there is another way in After Effects to do this where you set a, a bottom layer that's supposed to act like your ground and then you use a false light source or a light layer in After Effects to cast shadows through that text. I just went with this kind of quick and dirty way. So that's how I set my text. I did that at three levels. So there was text here, there's text in this set of graves right here, and then lastly there is text right here. And if at any time I want to create another set of text elements, I can just click on on the original clip layer. And then in the effects panel here, I can click on 3D camera tracker. All those dots will pop back up. I can right click between any dots and create a new text. So the last thing I'll fine tune before we get to masking this out is I don't like how sharp this text is. It doesn't look that realistic as if it's actually in the scene. So what I do for that is I just grab a quick blurring effect. We'll go to effect, blur and sharpen, camera lens blur. And then I'm gonna set that to about two. And that looks a lot more natural to me. It's a little bit fuzzy on the edges, not as clean. So it just looks more realistic. So the last thing we gotta get out of the way is the fact that this grave is getting overlaid by the text when the text is supposed to be behind the grave in 3D space. So what we're gonna do is we're going to copy this clip at the bottom, we're gonna go up to the top and paste it. I'm gonna highlight that, that layer that we just created. I'm gonna go to my pen tool and then I'm going to zoom in on this grave and start masking it out. All right, and that's my mask. Now, as you can see, this text is perfectly hidden right in this frame. But the second that I go to another frame, it's not so perfectly hidden. 
is we're gonna come down here to the tracker panel, which I've got in the bottom right. But if you don't see it, you can go to window and then tracker and it should pop up. And all we wanna do is analyze and track this mask forward in the scene. Now I'm gonna start with backwards because we don't have too much time backwards as we do forwards. Now you'll notice that this process isn't perfect. This is gonna start slipping up in some pretty important areas. You can already see the right side of the grave is starting to slip off of the mask. Around here is where it's perfect, but as we go backwards in time, it starts to slip up. Now you can do this one by one or you can and hold Alt and then drag out to select a bunch of points, which is obviously way easier. And then I'm just gonna kind of drag it back into line and make sure it's all good. All right, and this edge of the grave is starting to slip up a little bit too. So I'm gonna just help out the, uh, the algorithm, if you will. I did a lot of fine tuning and manual work to perfectly mask out these graves and I wouldn't wanna hide that from you guys. It's not as simple as one click, but if I just click all of the, of the drop down arrows on this layer, we eventually get to masks. And then if I click on the mask, we can see the actual keyframe tracking points of this scene. So we can actually see each tracking point that sets the path of the mask we created. What I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna delete a few of these tracking point frames, right? Right here is where it last was exactly how we want it. So now we've got a bunch of space between these keyframes and what After Effects will do is it's just gonna automatically gradually scale this set of keyframes. If I correct the mask path here, it should be generally correct throughout the rest of this space all the way up to this perfectly correct keyframe. And here is where I might use something like the free transform tools right here. I can actually just click on my mask path and then click control or command T and I'll get a free transform box for all of these path points. So I can just move all of them in unison to get it back to where I want it, which is super awesome. And I'm gonna move this side just to get it right in there. Perfect. So by using a combination of deleting keyframes and automating between the right mask points or using the track functionality, you should arrive at a perfectly tracked mask overlaying your text so that you have the scene looking like the text is actually in it. Now this is a particular case because I have just so much gray and green in the actual image. Even the gray is a little bit greenish because these are old mossy graves. So the software is having a lot of trouble distinguishing between what is what. That probably won't be the case for anything you're trying to track. If you've got something that's relatively light on a relatively dark background or it's, or it's taking up opposite spectrum. So if you've got something yellow on a purple background, it's gonna be a lot easier for After Effects to track it properly. Obviously, I had significant challenges with this. I'm gonna exit out of this test composition so that you now know these are all the different tricks in my tool bag that got me to this final scene. Oh, one last thing. You'll notice that there's a shadow on all of the text in my scene. What I did for that is I just took the original text, created a duplicate of it, and then I drew a mask using the pen tool over around the area where the shadow would cut off. Then if I just drop down here on that layer, you'll see that I used the levels effect to make that text just a little bit darker so that it simulates the shadows in this scene. But just kind of goes to show you that like, even if you don't have all of the tricks, you can still get really cool stuff done and really be able to say, I can do that. Like it might take me longer than it might take someone who's a pro at this, but I can do it. And the finished product is something I'm really proud of. So there's probably a million ways to do it better that I'm gonna get flame for in the comments for not going over, but I don't need to know all that stuff to get something done. So go out there and get something cool done that, that you're proud of. With that said, I've been Circa for Full Stack Creative. If this video was helpful, if you like this video, if you want more of these videos, click that like button and then click subscribe and ring the bell to get notified and I'll let you know when new stuff drops. I've got a whole lot of editing tips and tricks and just different music video ideas to share with you over the next few weeks. So if you like this video, you're definitely gonna love all that. And I'll see you in the next one.